Hi, I'm Jacqueline Snyder, and this is the Product Boss Podcast. I've helped launch and grow thousands of product-based businesses, even one of my own. And over the last 20 years, I've seen behind the scenes of businesses just like yours. Whether they are makers, manufacturers, artists, or food and beverage businesses, I have spent so many hours studying it all. I've discovered what makes them successful, what mistakes they could have avoided, how did they turn their ideas into a successful business, and what are the strategies that they have used to make more sales and be discovered by more customers. And this is what this show is all about. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to become a million dollar product boss, I'm here to give you the permission to chase your dreams, no matter how big or small. All you need is the right mindset, a little courage, strategy, and support, and you too can be the next million dollar product boss. Let's do this. Hey, hey, product boss. So listen, when it comes to marketing, AI is continuing to dominate with AI usage up like 53% since last year. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down because everywhere you look, it's like a new AI tool popping up for you to try. I mean, think about it. Instagram just released a meta AI function and even TikTok appears to be gearing up to release an AI update that will allow you to customize your algorithm. You can't escape it. So we can't escape it. Let's join it. So when it comes to marketing and keeping up with the ever-changing trends, you don't want to miss out, which is why you need to grab HubSpot's new AI trends for marketers report. It answers all your burning questions about AI, its usage and results in marketing. This report is an absolute game changer of insights and hot takes that you can only find inside here. Ready to see if AI is the right fit for you? Go to hubspot.com marketing to download it for free. Hey, hey, Product Boss, and welcome back to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. And I'm going to dig into, I think today's episode is going to be a little bit different in the way that kind of going to be a not tough love episode, but something that I'm feeling really done with. <laughs> and I want to share it with you. And I want to just, I want you to go along with me on this episode and this journey to be like, you know, is this something that maybe you identify with and something that you're like, you're done with too? So, you know, you've heard me talk about my journey of expansion and abundance and all the things that I'm trying to do this year with really like leaning into faith and faith in the universe or God having my back and that I don't have to hustle as hard and think that like, you know, it was funny is that my dad's funeral, one of the things that all of us as kids said, because there's five of us, all of us, even though we had different experiences and relationships with him, the thing that we said that we took from him was being a hard worker. And he also said that he would sleep when he died and, and he did, right. He's finally at peace. And I know that sounds kind of a little bit like morbid, but I kind of used to feel the same way. And then I realized there's no way I can sustain that, right. There's no way I can keep going at that kind of pace and also live. The other thing that we kind of talked about was our experience with wanting to be successful on our terms to live a life of abundance and opportunity to a lot of us kids out of the five of us, I think we're very entrepreneurial. Like we have our own businesses or we have very entrepreneurial type careers. And we also saw that with that hard work also came with picking one or the other, picking family or picking work. And so that's been a really big thing. I've seen it with my brothers. You know, we've been coaches of our kids' teams and we've done all these things that have been different than how we were raised. Because when we were raised, it was kind of like mom picked or chose or had to stay home with us as kids. And then my dad was like, I have to work. And that's how it's all going to happen. And it was like one or the other. And so it's kind of that like one or the other thing that I'm sort of done with. And I'm also done with the idea of like all the excuses all the excuses of the whys we can't do things, all the excuses of why we can't step into like the next version of us, all the reasons why things feel, I don't know, too expensive. I can't afford this right now. I don't have time. Like the, I have to do this kind of language. And it's been something that I personally have worked on because I recently invested into a coach, that same coach that helped me sort of manifest my dream house. My investment into working with her is the, it's a five figure investment monthly. And it's one of the most significant investments I ever made. And when she told me the price to work with her, 
my jaw dropped and I told my husband, he told me I was like absolutely out of my mind. Like he actually kind of got mad at me. <laughs> I can't believe you're bringing this to me. And I was like, but what possible on the other side, right? So the thing that I think I'm done with is this limiting belief, the self-belief, this playing small, this thinking that we have to play small, whether it's the people we're around, whether it's our own beliefs about ourselves, how we were raised, all the things. And one of the things that she said to me and how I decided to make this investment, which was probably one of the best ones I've ever made, because after only a month of working with her, I had an offer and on a house. And at the end of that was April at the end of this. No, 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 no. It was like a couple of weeks in. I made an offer on a house because by the middle of the second month working with her, I closed on the house, right? The dream house, the thing that I thought I could never have. And the thing I was like, it was like my white whale, right? It was the thing that I was always searching for and feeling completely inadequate about because she said, how long have you been telling yourself this story? How long have you been telling yourself the same story that's keeping you small, the same story that's keeping you stuck? right? Because no matter what, no matter what sort of shift I made in my life, and and I recall times I had felt this exact same way was home, scarcity, money, all that stuff had really come up for me. And so I think, I think about like the first time that I got an apartment, you know, moving out of my parents' house, post-college, getting a job, like, could I afford this apartment? Then I remember my husband and I, we bought our first condo together back in our late twenties in Hollywood. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like, not only do we need this down payment, if something breaks, we need to fix it. And can we afford it? And again, my idea of scarcity and loss and like, I'm going to lose everything because I was raised by someone who gambled and he did, he'd have, and then he'd lose it all. And so that was like a mindset thing that like was really hard because actually Mel said, Mel Abraham said this in our episode. He's like, it's caught, not taught. So a lot of the things that we experience as we're growing up, we're just kind of catching. We're like paying attention to, and we're like, catching it as an absolute. No one's teaching us that like when I make money, it's all going to run out. Right. But that's what I caught by watching what was happening around me as a kid. And so I thought about like these other times in my head that I believed it wasn't possible, that I couldn't do it, that all those like mindset things that came up. So it was like my first condo that we bought. We moved to New York City and lived on the Upper West Side. And it was like crazy to live in a doorman building. If you know, you know, and it was like my husband and I would be up late. And I remember him calling the producer who was like the producer of Wicked. Okay. And like saying, my wife is freaking out. She's afraid the show is going to close. And, and like, can we afford to pay for this rent? This is just a story that I've had for my whole life. Okay. So when I was thinking about buying this house, she really asked me, she's like, when else have you what else have you felt this way? And do you have proof that you've been able to overcome it every single time? When you push yourself to the edges of your comfort zone, when you started to expand, when you made a move that felt so uncomfortable, you had to show up for yourself and do something different. Did you do that? And I said, I did every single time, right? Getting my first apartment, buying a condo, living on the Upper West Side, eventually buying a house in New Jersey, like no matter what it was, even renting the house in LA was like the most expensive thing I had ever paid for when we moved back. We were renting for a couple of years again until I could find like the dream house. And this is just my problem, right? This is my story. But I think we all have stories of points where we believe it's not possible for us. And we will tell ourselves all of the stories that make it true. But is it true? And so one of the best pieces of advice I was given was look to a time when you felt like this before, look to a time when you felt like this and you felt like you wouldn't, you didn't know how to do it. You didn't know how to overcome it. You didn't know how to walk through it. And then know that you've survived a hundred percent of your worst days. That's what Jenna says. A hundred percent of your worst days that you've survived. And I thought about it and I was like, you're right. I have. Sometimes I get into these mindset things and I feel disempowered. I know I'm sharing a lot with you recently that's kind of intimate, but I think it's important to share that not only in growth and expansion and living these amazing things, but it still comes up, right? I, I've always tried to be honest and vulnerable with you and in this community. And so when I was making the decision and having a mini freak out moment on, will I be able to pay a mortgage on the stream house that I want that the bank says I can afford, <laughs> but my mind is freaking me out. I had to realize I had to step into the next version of me the next level of growth, I needed to push myself to the outer edges of what was comfortable and show up for myself so I could prove and push past it. So what I am done, what I am done and I'm done and I'm holding the space for you as well is you playing small and you believing that it's not possible for you and you, the discomfort of staying in comfort. Sometimes we choose over the thing that's uncomfortable, which is change, which is growth, which is expansion. 
So I want you to think about, okay, the next time something comes across and, you know, whatever it is, it's a coach that you want to work with. It's a program that you want to invest in. It's a piece of equipment, buying yourself something that you're just like, I can't afford it, but can you not afford it? Or are you choosing not to, right? What would it take if you decided to expand? I'm not trying to say like, well, what would it take if you decided to expand? If you were like, I'm going to push myself to these outer edges, these like the growth edges so that I can expand past it. Because what is possible if you're on the other side? Everything like, and I've been using this, this idea too. Like I like to come across visuals, like visualizations for me to really lock in on things. So I told this to my mastermind recently, and this is how I've like been able to hook onto it. Mount Everest. Imagine that you're going to train and climb Mount Everest. Now, most normal people, not normal, just most people in the world will never ever train and climb Mount Everest. That's why it is Mount Everest, right? It's this, this, this great mountain that very few people do. And I was thinking about that and I was thinking it's very much similar to being an entrepreneur, right? Because if you look around at your friends, your family, your community, you know, you might know some, some entrepreneurs, but most people are probably working for other people, right? They're staying in that comfort zone, but you've already decided to step out and climb Mount Everest. And especially if you're a woman, like we are living our mothers and our grandmothers' wildest dreams, maybe not even their wildest dreams because they didn't even know to dream this. They didn't even think or believe or know that there was a possibility of owning their own businesses, living life on their terms, making more money than, than they ever thought was possible, right? Being able to both raise your children and provide for your family and create products that you love, right? Like all of these amazing things they didn't even maybe even dream of because they probably didn't know it was a possibility. Or maybe they were like my mom who wished she had chosen differently in a lot of ways, not to have different, not to have, she wanted to be a mom and she did all that, but she regrets picking being a secretary over going to design school. And she eventually did that as we were all older. She actually went back to fit them and she started learning about visual merchandising and all the things. Okay. But she made that choice. And then she was like, I should have pursued. She could have pushed herself to the discomfort and the outer edges and lived a life that was not like a life that other people choose to live an extraordinary life, to not live this life of mediocrity and what everyone else is doing. And you already have taken that step because you've started a business. You've come up with an idea. You have a product that you either make or sell or all of the above, right? And so you're already climbing Mount Everest. Now, going back to that analogy, then you have to think about Mount Everest wouldn't be Mount Everest if it was easy, right? If it was like a small hill that you went up, no one would talk about it. No, it is hard. It is hard and it takes a long time. And you push and you push and you push your edges and you push to the parts that you're like, I don't know that I can keep doing this, but I'm going to keep doing this, right? And some parts might be super steep and windy. Some parts you might have to grip onto the edges with your fingernails and like climb and they're going to feel really hard. Sometimes you're going to need to rest. You're going to be exhausted. Sometimes it's going to be an easier path, all of it, but it's the journey there. And I know there's all the cliches and all the sayings about anything worth having and, you know, but like working really hard for something. And that's the thing. I want you to realize that you're already on this journey and that the thing of like, can't it just be easy, which I've said several times, like, why can't it be easy? Because it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be easy because having what we have and going through it and going through the hard stuff and going through the uncertainty and learning through it, right? Like I, there's been points over the last year that have felt like crash and burn moments in this business, in life. There's been so many big changes, you know, about so many of them. I bought the business last year. There's been so many changes over with like my team and establishing the business and starting new programs and just everything, right? There's just been a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And it's like, I have to keep telling myself, this wasn't meant to be easy. This wasn't meant to be like, oh, I just push a button and it all works really well. I've been working really hard. I keep telling my husband, I'm like, you know, I was like, in the summer, we're going to take time. We're going to be with the kids. And I like, I felt like Cinderella before the ball where I was like working all the way up until July to build out a brand new program. And how I saw that what I saw was like a need for the community, which is standout society, which has been getting incredible results and feedback that. I'm so, so proud of, but it was a labor of love, right? It was something that I had to create and work on and develop and change and all the things, right? But it wouldn't be as good as it is if I was just like, do, 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 right? No. And it's that journey and building and creating it. And then the, the amazingness that comes out on the other side. 
Hey friend. So I am back with another podcast recommendation. And this month I am all about the inclusion and marketing podcast hosted by the incredible Sonia Thompson and brought to you by the HubSpot podcast network, the audio destination for business professionals. Sonia does an amazing job of diving into important topics like belonging, customer experience, and diversity, and all of the things that you can do when thinking about your business. She also gives you practical tips and advice on how you can authentically practice inclusive marketing with your own business. Now, one of my favorite most recent episodes is where Sonia discusses with Dale Bertrand, founder of Fire and Spark, an SEO agency about smart ways to brand like yours, right? And it can be more inclusive with their SEO strategies to think through the different identities of your ideal customer and capture more would-be customers. This episode has so many amazing takeaways that you can start implementing in your SEO strategy as soon as today. And you know that we love a good SEO strategy. When it comes to effectively marketing your brand and products to your customers, listen to the Inclusion and Marketing Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Now back to the show. Happy holidays. Okay, don't think Jacqueline, what are you talking about? It's still warm outside. I know, but guess what? We wanna get you uber prepared for this holiday season because what we want is that you can get consistent sales, right? Have steady growth and keep growing your business beyond always having to offer a discount during the holiday season to drive sales. So if you wanna get prepared while it's still warm outside, you can jump in and grab 101 content ideas beyond the holiday discount. And it is a bundle of content prompts, tools, hashtags, and templates. And it includes a three month calendar with things to say every single day from October to December. It is so helpful. So go out, enjoy the sunshine and feel uber prepared for the holiday season when you grab yours now. Just head to holidaycontentideas.com. And so I want you to ask yourself, where have you been playing small? Where have you been making up these excuses of I can't do this because, right? I can't do this because I can't afford it. I didn't think, I don't even think I can afford what I'm investing in for myself, but I couldn't afford not to. I wouldn't be sitting here in the guest room. That's also my office in this amazing, beautiful house that I'm going to be hosting a retreat at in August for my community that I have my family over to on Friday nights for Shabbat that I, that I have like my kids, friends come over that I look around and I think, how is this mine? Like, how is this even possible? And then I look to myself and I say, I did it. And I tell my, myself as like a younger child, like my 10 year old self. And I'm like, I, we did it. Everything we walk through all the hard parts about all the things in life. Like I just had to get past so much of the reasons and the ways that I was just making excuses and continuing to stay in that dis into the, what was comfortable, which I hated comfort and staying small and playing small is not going to be the thing that gets us to the top of the mountain, the top of Mount Everest. So the next time you were given an option to push yourself, to push yourself to the outer edges of what you're comfortable with, to show up for yourself, you deserve this. You, it is your, it is your, you just, you owe it to yourself. It's not even deserve. You owe it to yourself to show up for yourself in a way that you've never done before. And I'll tell you that making this investment into myself, I didn't miss a single session because I was going to get every session for what I was doing. I was going to squeeze this lemon to make lemonade, right? It's not like, it's just, I was like, I, I, I have to make what's next possible. And I wouldn't have done that had I kept living in the idea of scarcity or I can't, or I can't afford this or life is happening to me or any of that. Right. And I want to stand for you. And I want to model for you that it's possible for you as well, that I want to share with you and, and help you move along in that you deserve so much of what this life has to offer. You owe it to yourself to live this life. That's not mediocre, but this life of abundance and legacy and proving to your little, your little, you know, your inner child, the younger you that all the dreams you had or the dreams that you are currently having are possible on the other side, but you have to push yourself. You have to push yourself. In fact, I realized that in my mastermind, my inner circle mastermind, it's too cheap of an investment for my students. You want to know why I believe that? Because when the investment is higher, when people pay, they pay attention, right? And that is why like I've been in masterminds, we've been $30,000 a year, $50,000 a year, right? Because when, when the investment is there, because here's the deal, let's just go with this. 
when I made my first first person investment as a business owner with the product blast when we started and I bought a course, it was $2,000. And I was like, oh my God, this is the craziest, most amount of money that we've ever paid for anything. And I was praying to God it worked, right? I was like, if I'm going to invest in this course, better friggin' work. I better make my money back. And I got in and within six months, it was a course on how to build a course. And then within six months, we built our first course and we launched it. We made I don't know. I think our first course was like $40,000 that we made with a very small email list and not a lot of people, right? This was like way, way, way back. $40,000 for a $2,000 investment. And then I thought, so like if I hadn't done that and I kept doing things the way I had always done it, but I said to myself, I'm going to make this investment that feels so uncomfortable, so scary. But if I don't do this, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to step up to the next version of me, the next level of me. And I did. And I worked hard and we worked hard. And then we, we, when I say worked hard, it wasn't like, I mean, yeah, we, we put in the time, right? We're climbing Mount Everest. It's not meant to be easy. And we put out a program that's now a multi-stream machine that's had, I think we're almost at like 6,000 students worldwide. It's made millions and millions and millions of dollars over the last several years for a $2,000 investment. I mean, when you're in it and in the moment, you're like, this feels crazy. I don't have the money. I don't have the savings. It, it has to go on a credit card, whatever it is. And then if you look back, it's like, that was silly. Like, I mean, of course I had to feel that way, but look now. And then when I first joined my first mastermind or I first started paying my first coach and all these things, it was like, all right, this is so scary and so uncomfortable, but I have to show up and I have to step up to the next version of me that this that will be able to afford this, that's going to put in the effort, that's going to put in the work, that's going to figure this out so that this is not ever a cost. It's an investment that pays out tenfold. And I have, right? top 10 podcasts in the world, living in my dream house, things that seven, eight years ago, I would have never, ever, ever, ever imagined for myself. So it was on the other side of discomfort. It was on the other side of doing the uncomfortable things. It was on the other side of pushing myself to my growth edge and stop. And I stopped making the excuses of, I can't because anything is possible. And I always wore this bracelet as I was growing up. And it's obviously a message that I really needed. And I received is what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Because I got to tell you, you're not going to fail either way. You're going to constantly grow. You're going to pick yourself back up. You're going to test, you're try, you're going to change, you're going to grow. You're going to keep growing no matter what happens. And you know this because when you look back at the worst days that you think, when I talked about the fact that you've survived 100% of your worst days and you look back, you got through it. You got to the other side. And so, like I said, this was going to be like a pep talk slash, you know, like I'm done kind of conversation. Because I don't want to sit back and watch you all, not all of you, but many of you come up with all the reasons why it won't work. All the reasons why you can't afford, you don't have time for, you know, all all these other things. I want you to start to imagine, imagine what if, what if it worked? What if I was so uncomfortable with the investment that I was making right now that I wanted to throw up as I was pushing the button, but that was the unlock that I needed to get to the other side. That was the thing that I needed to push me into that expansiveness, that next level self, that, that unlock the thing that was going to really put a fire under my booty because I was going to make sure, make sure that not only did I make my investment back, but I pushed past it and you could be like me, right? $2,000 $2,000 made $40,000, eventually made 80,000, eventually made a million, eventually made millions off of a $2,000 investment into a course, into a do-it-yourself course. And like I said, I've done it with masterminds. I've done it with retreats. I've done it for myself. And I share this with you. And the reason I also offer these as options to my students and my clients is because I know the power that they've had for me. And if someone like me from the childhood that I had from the scarcity, the mindset, the I'm a first generation American, from all the things that I've walked through and that as a woman in her 40s that I could hit becoming a millionaire in my 40s with kids that you can too, you can too. And I want to stand for you. I want to empower you. I want to be that person, that cheerleader and that pep talk person and that person that's like, is like that coach on the sidelines. It's like, you can do it and you're going to get out there and you're going to do it. Because I know and see and believe in what's possible for you. And I want you to believe in that too. And it takes with getting into discomfort, pushing yourself to the growth edges and, and not allowing for yourself to stay in the safe zone, which is not necessarily where you're, what's going to lead to what you want in this life. Okay. 
So my friends, thank you for listening to me and, and all the sharing. And I just really want to stand for this for you because I believe in you and I believe in what's possible for you. And if I am here and able to support you in any possible way that I can through this podcast, through my courses, my programs, my masterminds, my retreats, just following us on Instagram because you think it's funny, whatever it is, I want to model for you and share with you always in a very transparent way so that, you know, like, you know, it's not easy that it is hard, but the things that, what I think it is like if things worth having are on the other side of hard, I don't know. You probably know. And you can message me and tell me the right way to say it, but you know what I'm saying? Because when you climb the mountain, the hard parts, it's the journey that you get there. You get to the top of Mount Everest and you say, I did it. And it was hard and I trained really hard and it might've been blood, sweat and tears and it might've been all the things, but not, not like how few people climbed to the top of Mount Everest. And that is the same with entrepreneurship and especially the same with women owned businesses. Okay. Like 2%, 2% of women owned businesses make it to a million dollars. I'm proud to say I'm one. I'm proud to say that I've coached people into becoming women into becoming million dollar businesses with their products. And that's my mission, right? Like whether it's a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, 10 million, 25, whatever it is, I'm just here to help be your guide and empower you along. Okay. I'm your Sherpa on the way up Mount Everest. All right, my friends, I hope that you liked this episode. It was a little bit different, but I just really wanted to share this because I want to empower you as well as you start to shift and make the changes. So send me a DM, let me know your feedback on it. And I hope to inspire what's possible for you. Okay. Till the next one.